Well, under the premise that, you know, once a provider really understands what their obligations are when they decide to play in the third-party reimbursement or insurance company sandbox, uh, whether it's a participating provider or not, you know, many are making uh, the choice um, to move to, I, I hate to mislabel, but a cash model. And a cash model is mislabeled only because it doesn't really recognize the reason that the services are paid cash by the patient and the reason is is because they're not covered. And that would include wellness care, types of services that carers would consider experimental investigational uh, and whatnot. And where the patient coverage or not, that insurance company has no obligation to pay for those services and therefore that obligation falls to the patient. Now the benefit of doing that is consider that you don't need an EMR system, you don't need billing and collection staff, you don't have to store EOBs for seven years, you don't have to buy CMS 1500 forms, you don't have to buy stamps or pay clearing houses to submit those forms. Uh, so all of those overhead expenses are gone. Um, my dad's practice way back in the day, he had Burrow and she ran the front desk and, and, and made notations on ledger cards. That was it. And, and that's your administrative overhead expense because you have no billing. All the services are either prepaid or paid at the time of service, so you don't even have patient billing. Um, so there's that significant factor. You have uh, absolutely no post-payment risk, so you don't need uh, you know, attorneys to represent you in post-payment cases, compliance consultants, things of that nature, experts, and all the substantial expenses there. And then finally, you, know, you have to consider that when you're not no, or you're no longer engaging in what HIPAA calls covered transactions, which is electronic benefits verification, claims, payments, and uh, EOBs, um, you're not a covered entity under HIPAA. So while most people and, and most providers haven't really fully conformed to their obligations under HIPAA relative to risk analysis, development of appropriate policies and procedures, maintenance, training, auditing, uh, breach analysis, and things of that nature, all of those obligations go away and all of the potential penalties for not doing it as well as you should have, um, which, you know, those uh, penalties, uh, you know, in most cases are going to run at 50000 per incident. So, I mean, there's a substantial hammer behind HIPAA for noncompliance, and, and most people are just running the risk that they're not going to get caught. So um, that goes away. Um, finally, you know, when you consider uh, Medicare, I mean, you can treat Medicare patients. You just have to recognize that Medicare doesn't believe that anything a chiropractor does is ever medically necessary due to documentation deficiencies or the fact that Medicare patients are pretty much one and done. PRN, Aunt Gladys can only bring me on the second Tuesday of the month. Whatever the reason is, I mean, it's, it's almost impossible to get that kind of care covered. And even if you could, even if you had a Medicare patient that had an acute injury that needed a course of care, the documentation requirements are so severe that it's not profitable. You cannot make money when you have to comply with all of Medicare's documentation rules, submit the claim, you know, pay people to post the payments, chase after it, and then bear the post-payment risk. Um, if you're successful at that, uh, you're going to get audited, and it's going to be a costly process regardless. So that cash practice includes the transition of Medicare patients into a wellness or palliative care model, and then you avoid all that risk as well.